I've got myself one of these um, long overdue magnificent aircraft probably not the best looking aircraft quite sturdy thick chunky creature uh, but another one that's the stuff of legend uh, I always associate it with the underside rockets uh, and you see it in a lot of war films but you also see a few bits of footage from the real thing there's one in particular I'm sure it's a typhoon uh, which is flying over what appears to be a farm and it just shoots I think two rockets in and away it goes all goes up and it just flies above or just clips the smoke rising from its own explosion uh, remarkable thing um, it, this is the kind of aircraft that makes tanks redundant really does anyway uh, fairly up-to-date Typhoon from Airfix and oh, just good stuff let's get going well before we do let's put this another way um, yeah Ages ago, when I just started doing all this again, I got hold of an Airfix Typhoon, uh, and it was a, a I was going to say an early model, uh, in some ways it was, but it was kind of rebranded, reboxed and so on, and was out there as an up-to-date model, and it was shocking, and it might be the, not the worst model I've ever made, because the parts fit together. They had so few parts, it was probably the lowest value for money I've ever made. And I lost the film of it, but I've got two photographs of the box. This was so disappointing. So, we're going to start again. Well, here we are with one of those models that just wants to make itself. Uh, and the fit of just about everything is superb, which is what I'd expect these days from Airfix. Got a very nasty, uh, it's just uh, lining everything up, and I've taken a bit of paint off, but that's, that's easy to sort out. <coughs> this section underneath needs putting in. Uh, pretty rapidly to make sure that everything um, comes together neatly uh, and it has a little wobble to it so I'm going to have to line it up with that pretty swiftly and that will mean putting the upper wing on as well um, there's sort of no time to stop It's a shame you lose that nice uh, gun cradle, um, but it's very handy in uh, fitting the top surface of the wing on. Otherwise I'd probably um, cut it out and use it elsewhere. Anyway, there we go, never mind. Despite the rather nice interior underneath the, uh, or within the um, undercarriage housing. Uh, I am going to cover them up because I'm going to have this flying. So here's all our usual gubbins that goes on underneath. But they also provide very well formed um, hatches, hatch covers. Uh, very often if you are putting the wheels up Fitting all that stuff can be a bit of a faff because uh, they clearly aren't made properly. <laughs> That's what I can say. And uh, they don't fit. You have to cut things around and so on. But these are rather nice. I mean, it's worth doing it just to enjoy that. And what a lovely fit.
Uh, it's quite nice that um, I need to paint one of them because it shows everything rather nicely. The other thing about it is I haven't used any glue and they don't fall out. How about that? Well done, Airfix. I meant to mention you do get these in association with the gun racks in the wing. Uh, and interestingly, in the instructions, here we are, it doesn't say it's optional. It says you have to add that, cut that panel off and keep it. And then for the rest of the model it doesn't really show it, even in the painting instructions. So I'm assuming you can choose to do that so that to some degree or another the interior of the wing is visible uh, but I, I just can't see uh, an options thing because you get question marks all over the show anyway I'm not doing it <laughs> just thought I'd mention it there we are Well, I kind of did too much in one go, as I often do, and you may have just seen the light change on the table. That's the shadow of the cat on the windowsill. Anyway, here we are. This is the kind of finish I've been after for some time. Streaky and, uh, for the heavily weathered, that is, a uh, bit streaky. A little bit of darkness run into some of the panel lines, but not all. Very patchy and uh, very worn. And um, certainly towards the end of the war, the uh, Allied aircraft were absolutely hammered. Um, they were just almost constantly in the air. So you are bound to get a lot of wear and tear on them. And I've seen some photographs of these aircraft in particular that absolutely look shattered you know there's rust and oil and goodness knows what all over them so that's what I was aiming for with this one and so far we have it, the underside don't usually bother with undersides because they're, they're sort of a bit nothing here <laughs> that's a terrible thing to say isn't it anyway uh, but this one's kind of coming along quite nicely as well and uh, more work to do on that side but there we go so now we move on to like the next step which I think will probably be missile racks so I have to do the underside there we are underside and missile racks right this is where it started to go wrong sort of let's hope it doesn't carry on going wrong so I've got a rather weathered, weather-beaten aeroplane and I'd like to put the missile racks on but you need to have your D-Day and Beyond stripes on and that means it's covered up the little holes I've put in there so I've got to go fishing around to find those and also they're far too lovely and smooth and clean to go with the rest of the aircraft so they've got to get messed up as I smack the little model into the camera well I came outside to get some um, daylight and there isn't a lot but look at that sky you can see why they painted it that colour can't you anyway there we are uh, just a quick review then got the old um, rocket racks on. I think most of the major parts one so got to put the canopy on the rest of the markings because we've got some and um, weather in particular the nose cap but get it all blended in. Whoa, chilly are you? So that's the end of part one otherwise we'll never get this loaded on the Eat, um, eBay, <laughs> YouTube, um, and uh, you know, 
it just takes so long where I live. So hopefully no more snow, no more wind and rain for a bit. I might get some stuff, uh, some other stuff up and running. So thanks for watching. Uh, see you for part two shortly. And part two will have a minor disaster in it. There's a reason we've ended where we have. <laughs>